So I'm out on the screen in the porch. We had some rain come in, so it's nice and cool out here. Got a happy kitty and a glass of wine. And I'm gonna share with you another quick and easy um, idea for your live math virtual lessons. The one I'm gonna talk to you about tonight are using three act tasks. Um, I've got a whole blog post up about how I've used these in a traditional setting. If you go to the link in my profile and scroll down, click on three act tasks, and you can see more information there. Uh, tonight I'm gonna talk about how I would do it in a virtual lesson setting. So if you aren't familiar with three act tasks, they're free, um, they're posted online, they're free. They're real world problems that are broken down into three acts. Um, act one is kind of the hook and it'll pose a problem for students. And then act two will give them more of the information they need to actually solve the problem. And then act three will reveal the final answer. Um, my kids love them, they find them super engaging they like are dying to know by the end of the week what the answer is. Um, I'm gonna show a screenshot of the one that I usually use to start the year with that is about a hot dog eating contest. So when I do the three act tasks, I like to spread them out over the course of a week. So on Mondays, I would start with act one um, and I'll show, there's usually a video clip on the three act tasks. So I would show the first video clip and I want students while they're watching to brainstorm things that they wonder and that they notice. Um, ideally, I have them write this down in their math journal. If they have journals at home or paper pencil, um, they can write it down there. And then I'm, so this is what it would look like in their journal. So they would just write, make a T-chart, I wonder and I notice. And I usually give them the parameter that it needs to be mathematical because otherwise they get really silly on the things that they want and they notice. And this gets better over time. The first time you do this, their, their wonderings and noticings are gonna be probably pretty crummy, uh, but they'll improve as they know what you're looking so after the kids have brainstormed their own wonderings and noticings, I would call on some kids to share theirs out and make a class anchor chart. Um, when I do it in person, I make the anchor chart on paper. Doing it virtually, you could do a Google Doc and then share your screen and type the wonderings and noticings that they're telling you. I like to put the kids' names when I do that. It makes it fun when we refer back. Um, over the week to the chart. It also gives them a little bit, I don't know, they like to see their name on it. So sometimes that'll motivate them to share out. So they're gonna share their wonderings and their noticings. Then a lot of times I'll show the clip again. And then this time I want them to make an estimate. So on the three act tasks website, it'll pose a question for them to estimate. So for the hot dog eating contest, it's how many hot dogs did he eat? And they're gonna make an estimate that is too low so they'll come up with three estimates. They'll do an estimate, they'll do one they know is too low, they'll do one they know is, they think is just right, and they'll do one they know is too high. Um, and again, it, for this one, I would just have them type their estimates in the chat box. And they could just give one, or they could give two or three. This is a great way to bring in your kids who are not as confident with their math because they could say one, and that's one they know is too low, and they can feel pretty confident that they've got an estimate that's too low. And again, you're gonna add this to an anchor chart, a class anchor chart. So you're gonna have too low, just right, and too high. Definitely put their names because they're gonna love to see who got the closest when you get to the final answer. And that's all I would do on the first day. I might even break that up into two days. So on day two or maybe day three, depending on how much you broke apart that first day, um, you're gonna get to the second act. And the second act is going to start to give them the information they need to actually solve the problem. So for example, in the hot dog eating contest one, the act one, they just see a clip of somebody eating a bunch of hot dogs. And then they start to find out how many grams he ate. And then they find out how much a hot dog weighs. And then they find out how much a hot dog bun weighs. So depending on how much information is in act two and how much time you have, you could break this up over a couple of days. 
I would typically show them the first piece and have them just go back and revise their estimate given what they know. Um, so what you know now, it's a really loud airplane, what you know now, what do you think is an estimate that is too low, just right, or too high? And we will add them to our class chart. So once they have all the information that they need to solve the problem, this is where you're gonna to wanna to get creative with your virtual lessons. So when I would do this in person, I would have them go back to their desks or bring a whiteboard to the rug and on their own or with a buddy or at their table groups, try to solve it. So given what they know, can they do the math to figure it out? Um, for virtual, depending on your kids and the technology you have and what your comfort level is with technology. You could do breakout rooms. So you could set up some breakout rooms and have kids work in groups of two or three or four or whatever and try to solve the math together. Um, usually these problems are pretty tricky. So the kids trying to do it all on their own, that's gonna be challenging for them. Um, if you're gonna have them trying to work it on their own, then you might so you could use problems from a grade level below what you actually teach so that they're a little bit easier for kids to do independently. Or you could um, have kids kind of walk you through it and solve it as a class. Like a, like a, I, it makes me think of when you would teach reading and you do like a shared read aloud, like a shared reading, uh, like a shared math problem. So you could, have kids tell you what you think they think the first step is that you do and you work it out together. Um, that could be an alternative to doing the breakout rooms if you still want to get those more difficult, rigorous word problems for your kids. Um, I usually spend one or two days with the kids working out the problems depending on how long they need to do the math, which depends on the level of difficulty of the problem and how much time we have. So once they have figured out what they think the answer is, which is why I think it's more fun for them to figure it out than to do it working together, but you gotta do the best you can do given the circumstances. Um, then you get to do act three. And act three is where they find out if they got the answer correct. So it will reveal the final answer and it usually does it in a pretty engaging way, like a video clip. Um, you also want to make sure that especially if kids are working it out in small groups or on their own, that you're giving them time to share how they solved it. We really want our students to be able to verbalize their thinking and be able to explain how they're working through a problem. And you can model writing that as an equation. Um, that's going to help them really get that foundation for how to write an equation without you necessarily direct teaching it. So just to wrap it up, um, the three act tasks are a great component for your live virtual lessons. You're not going to spend more than five to ten minutes on the three act task each day. So it's not going to necessarily take up your entire live lesson time. But it's a great way to get kind of sneak some content in and keep your students super engaged, even when they're learning remotely. Um, utilize the chat box, utilize sharing your screen. You can use a Google Doc to make a class anchor chart. Um, you could try out breakout rooms and have kids working it out in small group. Have kids sharing using the microphone. Use all of those tools, or at least whatever you're comfortable with, and it'll make it even more engaging for your kids. Tomorrow, I'll come back and I'll share another idea for your live math lessons. So I will see you then. Cheers.